Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on Cisco ACS. You can find complete lists of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest updates. In our last video, we looked at machine and user authentication with Wire 8.2.1x on Cisco ACS. In this video, we will repeat our lab with wireless. Here's our lab setup. We have Cisco ACS 5.4 at the IPF.100, a domain controller and a certificate server at the IPF.40, and a wireless LAN controller at the IPF.104. Now for our test machine, we have a Windows 7, LM Win 7 Test 1 that we're going to be using for our testing. We have a two test user, admin1 and support1, that's a user on the AD. Admin1 being a member of wireless user group that we're going to grant access to wireless, or support1 that's not part of the wireless user group will not be able to access to wireless. And we will be looking at both PEEP and EEP TLS for our authentication protocols. Now first let me show you the two users on the AD that we will be using for our testing. First is the admin one. You can see admin one currently is domain users as well as network admin. So I'm going to go ahead and add the user to a wireless user group right here. Click OK, apply. While uh, support one, we look at the membership. We're not going to leave it and not add it to the wireless user because we do not want support one to have access to wireless. Okay, now on the ACS server, we already have the controller added right here, LMDBLC1, the IP of dot one zero four as the network device, and we also have radius protocol enabled for the device. Okay, so what the configuration we have completed already from our previous video, and those configurations are machine access restriction here under Active Directory, where they have it enabled with aging time of twenty four hours. We also enable our configure cache distribution group for cache replication. We also have our certificate authentication profile created to use the CN or common name. And we also have created a identity store sequence called cert AD local that's gonna utilize certificate based as well as password based authentication. And we also define AD1 for our additional attribute retrieval when it comes to certificate-based authentication. Okay, now as far as policy elements, we have downloadable ACL called LM permit all. And actually we're not even gonna be dealing with downloadable ACL in this video since downloadable ACL is usually for wired. And for wireless, we'll be dealing with name ACL, which will be created on the controller itself. And what we need to do is to create an authorization profile for our wireless. You can see here back in the Wire 802.1x video, we had the Wire AD login created, and that's for when the machine authenticates, and that's the ACL that it will receive to only allow user to be able to lock into the AD. So we're gonna have to create pretty much the same thing for our authentication here. So let's call this one LM WLAN AD login. And since we're not dealing with downloadable ACL for wireless, instead we're gonna be using name ACL. So we need to add a radius attribute under airspace and then here with airspace ACL name. And let's lock into our controller and see what ACL we have configured already and see what it looks like. And under security, access controllers, and we have one called LMAD login. And we're basically allowing DSCP, DNS, and communication to our domain controller at 32.40. So we just have to copy that name and make sure it matches here. And don't forget to click add and click submit. Okay, so we've got our LM WLAN AD login. Okay, now moving down to access policies, back in the Mac authentication bypass video, we have created two access services and one of those is LMWLAN and we have created the rule that said if the radius is coming from a wireless LAN controller we're going to pass it down to LMWLAN access services which is what we have right here and then under allow protocol we already have EPTLS as well as PEEP with MSCHAP v2 enable. Now as far as the identity we have already created a rule for the WLAN map so we, right now we need to create one more rule for our WLAN 802.1x. So let's click create. We'll call this one WLAN.1x. 
on the compound condition, we're going to have to pick or specify the radius attribute that will help ACS identify the request that's coming from a .1x type authentication, and that will be for service type. If you remember for wireless map, the service type will be call check, but for 802.1x, it will be frame. So add that, and then we can tell it to use cert ad local, ad ad store sequence, and it'll click save. Okay, so that's for authentication policies, now for authorization. Since we're going to be conditioning based on the group membership of wireless user, we need to add external group as well as was machine authenticated to verify machine authentication. Then we'll click create. Now for a compound condition, again, we're going to pick the radius attribute that identified as being wireless 802.1x will be NAS port type. Here, wireless IEEE 802.11 add. And then we have to specify service type. And that will be frame. We'll add those as and with the logical and. Okay, now for external group, the first one's going to be for our machine. This is the first round authentication of machine authentication. So we'll call it the VLAN machine. And we want to make sure the machine is part of a domain computer. That means the machine has been joined to the domain. And if that is true, we want the machine to receive the VLAN AD login authorization profile. Then we'll click OK. And then we have to create one more for the second round of authentication, which is the user authentication. We're going to duplicate below. Stand of machine, we'll call it user. Compound condition stays the same. The group. AD group membership has to change from domain computer to wireless user. And this is the group that we added back in the AD integration process. And then we want to make sure the was machine authenticated is equal to true. And we're going to switch our authorization profile to permit all. Okay, so once the both machine and user authentication succeeded, we want to permit a full access to them. Then we'll click save. Okay, so that's all config that we need for ACS. Now we're going to switch over to our controller. So under the controller, we already have the ACS added as a radius server. So if you go under security and radius authentication, you will see it right here, 32.100, as well as the accounting server. Now we're going to reuse one of our configured WLAN or SSID called LM internal. Here you can see as for security, we have WPA2 with 802.1x enable. Now for the AAA server, we want to point it to our ACS, so 32.100. And under advanced, let's make a quick note that we have allow AAA override enable as well as the next state of radius NAC. Okay, so apply. And now we can begin our testing.